Welcome back to the channel, my name's James. Today we're going to be talking about press fit, its uses. We're gonna be piping up a little radiator behind us in the three kind of main ways that I think you as viewers will be piping them up. And we'll be talking about the pros and cons there are when it comes to using press fit, how easy it is to use this amazing gun from Alpha Press and all the features that there are in it. So without further ado, let's get going. So before we continue, let's have a look at the tool that we're actually going to be using today to demonstrate press fit fittings and also give you an idea as to the versatility and size of fittings that we have out there because there are pretty much the three big kind of fitting sizes that we use in domestic and sort of light commercial plumbing are covered already by this particular tool that we've got here today. But there are obviously massive versions of press fit that require larger guns and all that. That's not my bag, I'm afraid, everybody. We're not gonna be doing that today. We're staying with your 15, your 22, and your 28 mil, all right? The tools that you get from Alpha Press, I've been using these for the last, well, since my little baby boy Ted was born, um, and now I'm very happy to tell you all about them. Um, so, whoop, look at that, sweet as a nut. So we come with two Makita three amp hour batteries, uh, standard ones with the a uh, little gauge on the back so you can see whether they're charged up or not. We've got a 15 millimeter, so I'll look at the jaws well first. So we've got 15 millimeter jaws in here. Um, and then inside the box as well, with that, we've got our 22 millimeter jaws. And then after that, we've got our 28 millimeter jaws. And then simple really, you've got a little Makita charger on there as well. And that's pretty much what you get in the box. You do get one of these, but I mean, I'd generally throw shoulder straps away. They just get really, really annoying. Also, you get a couple of these as well, which I believe are the connections for the pipe deburrer you get. The pipe deburrer is here. Now, we can't, there's, a, there's a housing for this that goes onto a drill. I've got a few different pipe deburrers. This one is like butter. It's really, really nice. Um, so it's nice to sort of get that chamfer off on the edge, which is very important when we're doing press fittings. Um, but also we can get rid of anything on the inside as well. And it just does it really smoothly. It doesn't sort of do a horrible cut. Uh, refreshing to use one of those. It's really, really good. And nice that they've supplied a good one with the set. So let's have a look at the first thing that people kind of have a question about when it comes to press fittings is how quick and easy is it to change over the head? Oh, I'll be showing you right now, lucky people. Leave the battery out for now, health and safety. So to remove the head, so we pop this round, we can then pull this out like so. The head just lifts out and then you safely put it in the box so you don't lose it. And then, oh, we're doing some 28. So you pop the 28 mil head in there like so, pop that back in twist that round and we're all ready to go. So that's how the heads work and it's pretty much the same with all the other sizes. Today we're going to be working on 15 mil. So we'll just be popping that in there like so. I have got an extension set of heads here today for areas that are quite difficult to get at because not all the time can we get directly on the edge of the pipe. Uh, we can sometimes be in sort of difficult spaces to work in. And the best way of doing that is to have a little kit like this. So what this allows us to do, we've got all the same sizes of head in here. Today we're gonna be using the uh, 15 mil head, okay? And how these work is kind of just work like a little adapter really. So we take off this head like that, pop that out. Then we pop our adjustment head in like that. Spin that round. And then this goes round the back of the pipe, okay? And then that's clamped up on there like so. And that allows us then to have all this difference in position. So if we are in a diff difficult position, we're up by a wall here or something and we can't get in properly, we can use this little adapter here to give us that swing so it's much more versatile. So it goes without saying, you do not want to put your fingers anywhere near this end of the work area. Otherwise you might find out they suddenly look like a Connex press fitting uh, or something similar to that, okay? Which is not what you want to have happen to your thumb or anything. So look, without further ado, we've got a little radiator behind us here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pipe it up in the three different main ways that you as YouTube viewers would pipe up your radiators or as you as plumbers, professional plumbers would. And what I want for you to take away from that is there are pros and cons to using every one of these different types of fittings. So we've got end feed, solder fitting, we've got compression fitting, okay? And then we've got our actual press fit fittings, okay? So let's have a little go at piping this up. Also, that will give me an opportunity to show you how this actually works in a situation like we've got behind us here. 
Now, I know some of you are going to say, why aren't you doing this in someone's house? But you try and pipe up a customer's hat radiator in three different methods, okay? It doesn't go down very well. So it's easier that we do it here. And then you can say to yourself, hmm, maybe I'll get one of these machines. Or maybe it's not for me. Who knows? Without further ado, let's get on with it. Here we are, radiator on the wall. We've got two 50mm pipes coming down as a standard drop-down leg, fat, fitted on my beautiful faux brick wall. Beautiful. Um, so what we're going to do for this first one is uh, I'm just going to pipe up in compression fittings. We're just going to go up into this first radiator valve here, okay? So let's get on with it. Nice and easy. So there you go. That's that side piped up in compression fittings. Now the pros of compression fittings are we aren't using any heat to do anything so there's no risk of fire, there's no hot works permit that you need to get or anything like that and generally it's the sort of thing that anyone can do as well you just got to know how to tighten something up with a set of adjustables and a set of grips. You might need a bit of paste on these to, uh, to seal them up which drives people completely mental in the YouTube comments for some reason but there we go. But the one thing about them is look at them. They look horrible, the sort of thing you see in a pub, um, it's not the sort of thing you want to see in someone's home. So let's look at the other way that we can pipe up at this radiator, which is going to be end feed fittings. So obviously we're having to clean the fittings, takes a little bit of time. And then we've got to flux the fittings to make sure that they're nice and clean. Then you've got to solder the fittings up safely without catching fire to anything. And also you need the skills to be able to do that because soldering is a skill and something you've got to practice. Then you've got to clean them all off with a wet rag. Then you need to brass of it as well if you want to. So as you can see, the pros and cons there of doing this is that it looks kind of lovely if you do great solders. I mean, it's not the best soldering ever, but it, the fittings are a lot smaller. They get in the way a lot less, but we have to use a hot works permit to be able to do this sort of work. There's the long length of time it takes you to actually do it. It takes ages doing this sort of thing uh, because we're having to uh, measure the pipe, we're having to clean the pipe, flux the pipe. Then we've got to spend time soldering it. We then have to spend loads of time on site after we've done that soldering to make sure that there's none of the fabric of the building that we're working is on fire. Uh, so there's lots of things that we have to do when it comes to soldering. It looks great, but it's a load of hassle to do. So let's have a look at press fit, how we'd use press fit to pipe up this radiator now. So the preparation we have to do with the pipe is really important that we deburr the pipe. So we've got an internal one on here. Give that a good old deburring, all right? And it's also really, really important that we get the outside as well deburred off, especially if it's the first cut of a length of pipe, because if we actually look, um, we've got a new bit here. You can always see the ends are really, really hard, okay? And the fact that that end bit then could actually push off the fitting as it goes in. So it's really important that we do that. The next thing we need to know about, need to do, is once we've got the fitting pushed into position, make sure it's all the way there. And if you want then, you can just mark it with a little pencil to know. But I wouldn't do that personally. What I would use is a felt tip pen to mark it once it's been crimped, okay? So you can go around and do it. But look, just watch me do this now. It is very, very simple and easy. One thing I like about these fittings, it's like a nice little advantage that a lot of people don't speak about in the other YouTube videos about press fit, is that once you've put them together, they're kind of held in place by the rubber of the O-ring before you actually do the press itself, which makes it a little bit easier to get all your pipe work nicely measured up and looking beautiful. Right, so there we go, that's all ready to crimp up. Uh, now, just to demonstrate the angled one, so we've got the angled one on here. This is the one that we can actually pop over the back of a fitting, like that, okay? So we can have that, sort of if this was tight up against something or something or other, we can then pop that on there, then we can get this on here like so. That goes into our gun and then we can crimp that up. Uh, well, we could demonstrate that now if you want, actually. Mm. The one thing is, you've got to be quite light-handed with crimping guns, just to make sure that when you've got everything nice and straight and horizontal, when you're working with this sort of quite chunky gun, uh, that you don't move your pipe work when you're crimping it and then crimp it out of square, so it looks dreadful. But we're not going to do that because we're master crimpers. So as you can see, these fittings have a small O-ring on the inside that when we use compressive force from the gun itself, 
will force that O-ring to create a watertight seal all around the pipe. But also the fact that the outer part of this is all made of uh, coppery, brassy goodness. It means once this is compressed, it will never, under vast amounts of pressure, or I never say never, but it's very, very unlikely to ever leak. They're as safe as uh, solder fittings and way safer, I'd say, as uh, compression fittings. So I'll just pop this on air like so, nice and lightly. We want to make sure everything's in position first. There we go, that one's done. And this, that is literally not gonna go anywhere, it's like solid, okay? But let's just demonstrate the normal one as well. So look, you've seen there, you can just do it from any direction. If you can get end on on all your pipe work, it's nice and easy. Nice and easy, everyone happy? And there we go, that's done. So the advantages of press fit, number one, no hot works. We don't have to wait around for ages after we've done it to uh, make sure that we haven't caught fire to anything because we've not used a soldering gun. I think it's personal preference actually compared to a uh, solder fitting, whether it looks better or not. I think they, they look really, really nice. They're so quick and easy to fit. There's a, generally a 25 year guarantee on the fittings. And I don't know anyone who offers that on solder fittings or even compression. They look way better than compression fittings. They're quick and easy to do. And there's just no stress or hassle after doing it. It's clean. Uh, all you need is your fittings, your, your cutter, your reamer, uh, and your press gun. And you're ready to go. So because of that, it's so easy. I'm just gonna pipe up all the way along here uh, and get it all in with a little drain off as well. So you can see that at the end, all right? Right, so then guys, you've seen how easy it is for us to use press fittings to not only get pipe work installed so it looks good, but so it's safe, so we haven't used any hot works or anything like that. And I think you'd agree, it looks pretty decent. I mean, you wouldn't go into a house if you weren't a plumber and notice that, and most plumbers wouldn't notice it either. There are obviously a few other pros and cons that I haven't covered while we were doing that just then, and that's the strip down ability, I suppose you'd say, of each one of these fittings. So compression fittings, you can basically strip them down and if you're lucky, you can prise off the olive off the end of the pipe and then strip down the fitting, replace it or do whatever work you need to do. Obviously it's a little bit more difficult to do that with soldered fittings. You'd almost say you can't really strip them down, but obviously we all know that we can sweat them apart uh, with just a bit of heat and we can sweat apart a normal fitting like this coupling, take the pipe work out. It's hot, it's messy, it's quite difficult. You need the skills to be able to do it. But the one thing about these press fittings that we've got here, you cannot strip them down. So if you get it put in first time and it's wrong, the only way you'll be able to rectify that is by cutting out everything that you've done. You lose the cost of the fitting um, and some of the pipe work that you've used as well. So that is a, a bit of a drawback. The other thing is the cost of the fittings as well, actually, compared to solder end feed um, and also compression. You'd probably say that this is probably the most expensive. One of these fittings will cost you about pound twenty, something like that. One of these will be about a quid probably. And then one of these is gonna be about like 15, 20 P. So there are the difference in fitting, but then you save a lot of time doing that. So when it comes to labor, costs and all those things, so it's all swings and roundabouts, but something you should definitely know about and consider. This is going to be the future guys. Loads and loads of people are using this sort of equipment now. So I highly recommend you check it out. Get, get alongside it. If they're ever near you at a trade show or if you see them in a wholesalers or a suppliers, check out Alpha Press's stuff. I've left a link to their website in the description below. So check that out for more information as well. And if you've got any questions or comments, comment them below and I'll make sure that Alpha Press see it and reply to you. Thanks for watching today's video. Check this one out here. It's a great video, it's beautiful. You're gonna to wanna to click on it. And also make sure you subscribe. If you don't subscribe to the channel, please leave and never come back. Speak to you soon.